Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 72. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have Chloe Thomas, best-selling author, international speaker, and the host of the e-commerce master plan podcast. Hello, Chloe. Hi, patients. Great to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for coming. I know the clan here is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your online business? Take us right up to the last job or business before you are online. Well, wow. Um, well, I've been in business for about 10 years now. I'm com- coming up to my decade anniversary. So it's been, it's been quite a while since I started this journey. But, um, but, but what happened before that was um, after I finished my degree, I was lucky enough to get um, a graduate placement with Barclays Bank in the marketing area. And that was quite interesting, but I decided that big banks weren't really the place for me. So I applied for pretty much any marketing job I could find. I was, you know, um, rifling through the back pages of Marketing Week every week and uh, got the first job I got was working for Pastimes, which is a UK retailer, high street retailer with a catalogue business as well. So, so given I had quite a lot of direct mail experience from Barclays, I was working on their catalogue mailings and their in-store loyalty program as well as uh, this this would have been back in about 2003, 2004. So as well as getting involved in the the start of the online journey, really, the, the beginning of sending emails to customers and starting off with Google AdWords and affiliate schemes and all that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Then um, that business went under the second Christmas I was there. It wasn't my fault, I don't think, anyway. Um, and... <laughs> um, but that was quite good because it meant I, I essentially got headhunted, I suppose. But I got invited in for chats with some other mail order businesses. And um, that led to me taking a job which had where I was going to be head of e-commerce for was about six or seven different e-commerce businesses at this consultancy. And the the carrot with that job offer was if this works out next year, we'll turn it into a standalone business. So that's the, the kind of the catalyst that turned me into a business owner. Oh, what a journey. Yeah, <laughs> and only just a few years. <laughs> okay, so why do you do what you do? Oh, there's a big question. Um, I do what I do because I get very frustrated seeing businesses either wasting a lot of time and effort and energy on things which are clearly a bad idea and are not going to bring them the returns equal to the amount of effort that their effort and money and budget they're putting in. And I also get very frustrated seeing businesses not using that one method, that one idea that could make the difference for them. So really kind of everything I do is about helping e-commerce business owners make better decisions about what they do and don't do. So, example, what is like one idea or one method you see most of businesses are not using? Do you mind give us like one little nugget? Oh, that's easy. Um, (laughs) It's it's not particularly exciting, but it's easy. Um, it's, It's doing more with email marketing than just sending a blast communication to all your list. Um. We've been, it's, it's a boring answer because we've been talking about segmentation and automation for, well, pretty much ever since I've been involved in this industry. So what, for the last 15 odd years or something. Um, so we've been talking about it for a long time. The technology is now there and at a price point that, that even the, the simplest startup can do this stuff. But the number of businesses still not doing it is just so depressing you know businesses with as large a product range as Argos who send two emails a week to every single person on that database whether or not you've ever bought jewelry from them whether or not you've ever bought toys from them whether or not you have any interest in gardening whatsoever if they're sending a gardening email you will get it and that I find to be you know if you can if you if you can create 
decent email sign up with a welcome sequence after it, a good post purchase sequence to your customers, an abandoned baskets email, you are already ahead of 90% of the e commerce businesses out there. Thanks. Sorry, that, uh, that turned into a bit of a rant there, Patience. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's great. Okay, so you've been in the business for a number of years and now you have your show. So let's put the man aside. How did you know you were successful? Ooh, um, I have no idea whether I'm successful or not. Other people think I'm successful. Um, and I think... I guess the reason I don't know if I'm successful or not is because I don't have like a number on it. It's not like once I've got 100k in the bank, then I'm successful. Or once my turnover hits this, then I'm successful. Or once I've got this car, then I'm successful. For me, it's about how enjoyable my life is. And if I can get to the point where there's not too many stressful projects going on, which at the moment is not the case, um, then, and, and you know, things are flowing and I'm I'm remembering all the good things I've learned and I'm putting those into practice and I've got a good balance between work and life and I'm enjoying my spare time, then then at that point I'm successful. Mm-hmm. Can anyone be an entrepreneur or are some people more cut out for it than others? I think anyone can, but I think there are certain types of business which certain so which suits different people and i think if you enter the world of business you know not not being an employee with your your eyes open to who you are and what suits you then you'll go a lot farther further even um you know my first business was a marketing agency that operated as an outsourced marketing team for uh, mail order businesses so an outsourced online marketing team which involved a lot of client interaction a lot of team interaction and for me as an introvert that was just a really dumb route to go down because i didn't have the energy to be to do it to do good interactions with the clients good interactions with the team and good interactions with new business all at the same time so that was a bad move whereas now now, my new business, e-commerce master plan, is a lot more introvert friendly. It's a lot more friendly to how I like to live my life. So, I think anyone can do it, but I think it's quite easy to to start with the wrong business, both in terms of what suits you and in terms of what um, what the market wants. Because you know, there's, there's also that side of you know, yeah, maybe you think it's a great idea, but if the market doesn't want to buy it or they don't want to buy it at your price point, then you're not going to get very far either. But I think anybody can do it. What reassurance or encouragement have you got for my members of clan who are not quite there yet? Oh, keep going. I know I know everybody says it, keep going or just do it. Um I think you have to you have to listen to your gut, you have to keep doing the research, keep being aware of what's out there and at some point something will will resonate with you and you'll know this is the opportunity I need to go for. And you know, sometimes it's not a flash of light. It's just the fact that this idea is niggled in your head pretty much every day for the last two weeks. You're like, okay, clearly, clearly there's some legs to this because, because my brain keeps reminding me about it. Um, so yeah, just, just be, be persistent and, but bide your time if you need to. And, uh, and when you're ready, it'll happen. But how long, Koro, can we be like a year, a two? Do you, can you give us a frame time when we oh. say like, you know, this idea clearly is not working. I I think if you've if you've done the different options for making an idea, you know, if you're if you're testing a new idea and you've done the various options well, you know, you've you've not just like gone, oh, I think email might work. I'll send one email, and then you decide email doesn't work. You know, it's like like if you turn on Google AdWords for three days, and then you decide it doesn't work for you. Well, you you've got to put in a couple of months optimization before you discover whether AdWords works or not. So if you've tested well then, you know, you have to keep an eye on those KPIs and, and you'll see the point where it goes. But, you know, sometimes you can be ahead of your time and, and sometimes things that just don't come on the radar. I mean, I've, um, I'm in, what, year five now, I think it is, of, of e-commerce master plan. And on my theoretical business plan right from the start was doing online courses and it's only in 2017 that I finally got around to actually doing it. So five years into the business, I finally got on with building what I thought was going to be one of the core parts of the business just because other stuff comes in and it distracts you. So you have to, you have to kind of um, make sure you t- test things thoroughly. 
which is the reason why I haven't yet done video courses up until now because I didn't have the bandwidth to do it properly. I could have paid lip service to it. I could have chucked something up there and maybe had a couple hundred quid, but that that's not the way to make a course work. So you've got to give it the bandwidth and give it the effort. And if you've done that and it's still not working, then you've got to twist and pivot and try something else. Wow. Oh, thank you. Sound good that now you are, you are lipped and now everything is working. <laughs> okay. well we're still in test mode but we're a lot closer than we were <laughs> at least we are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> oh yeah definitely but you know but, but bear in mind I've been you know balancing two businesses for most of the time I've been doing e-commerce master plan and you know it's only been since 2016 that I've really had the time and effort you know four days a week plus to devote to it so that makes a big big difference wow do you have a mint at all I've had kind of mentors and coaches in the past. At the moment, I don't. Um, and I'm actively, well, actively, actively slash passively looking around to try and find someone to bounce ideas off. Yeah, it's definitely a gap in my, in my, uh, in my repertoire at the moment. Okay. What is the most valuable thing you have ever given away? Oh, wow. Um... Probably my time. I give that away way too much. Um, I can't think of it like a, a thing you, you you know that you buy that I've given away that's that's crazy money. Yeah, so I'll say my time. Okay, let's talk about your business, your customer persuasion. Tell us more about it. Okay, well, customer persuasion is my latest book. Um, it's subtitled How to. Influence your customers to buy more and why an ethical approach will always win. It published in 2016 and it's all about how to persuade your customers to move up to the next customer relationship level. So in the first instance, to get them to visit your website, then to get them to become an inquirer, get them onto your email list. Then stage three is all about getting them to buy for the first time. Stage four is all about getting them to buy again because, of course, that's where the profits really start to roll in. And then finally, the, the final fifth stage is all about where how to, how to learn from those repeat and regular customers so as you can make the whole, the whole process um, more profitable for you. So it's you kind know, of the subtext within it is you need to work out where your business is weakest in those five stages to then focus your effort there and improve that before moving on to where the next weakest stage is because it's a lot of us um me included sometimes we we follow rather a scattergun approach you know monday we do a bit on attracting new customers tuesday we do a bit on email signups wednesday we do a bit on research thursday we do a bit on something else and um and if we spent a whole week working on one thing um our businesses would get much better a lot quicker wow who's the book written for it's written for the smaller retailer, so the smaller e-commerce business, so sub half quarter of a million turnover, really. Um, and it's, I know it's being used by people in other niches, so in or in other sectors. It's being used by people in the consulting world and in pretty much anything where there's an online component, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and it's also being used by some some huge businesses, so. Uh, one of the reviews, in fact, the review on the front cover is from the Deputy E-Commerce Director of Shoe, which is one of the UK's biggest high street shoe stores. So it's written for the, for the guys at the smaller end, but there's a lot that much bigger businesses are already learning and implementing from it. Wow. Where do we find this fabulous book? Well, it's available as an ebook, an audio book, and also a paperback, and it's on Amazon. So Amazon, um, Audible for the audio book and iTunes for the audio book. Um, but yeah, Amazon all over the world, basically. And if we want to contact you to say that we, I can't read this book, can you interpret it for me? Where do we find you? Uh, you can find all my contact details at ecommercemasterplan.com. And I should also say, if you want to try out the first couple of chapters of the book, you can get those at customerpersuasion.co.uk, totally for free. Wow. Okay. So, Clan, there will be more from Chloe in a moment. If you are finding Chloe's journey interesting and you are ready to hear more, come and listen to the full version of the interview at onlinesuccessjourney.com. If you are already at Online Success Journey already, click on part two of Chloe's journey and you'll get lots of tips to help you with your own business. Don't forget, you can access all other Online Success Journey interview podcasts on the site as well. 
So that's a wrap plan. Remember, success is a journey, patience and growing. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast, and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form, by clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube, or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on Ratings and Reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.